Hello and welcome to Animated Anatomy. My name is Faris and in this video I will talk to you about the flexors of the forearm. In my previous video I've explained the extensors of the forearm and those are the antagonists. Remember, the extensors are also called the muscles of the posterior compartment, while the flexors are called the muscles of the anterior compartment. There are also muscles that do the pronation and the supination. I will also explain these muscles and how they antagonize each other. Stick with me and we will virtually dissect the anterior compartment of the forearm. I will also now remove this muscle and we finally are finished, have finished with the posterior compartment. We have dissected the posterior compartment. We, are good. we have explained the important nerves here. We have explained the important arteries as well as the muscles. Now we should virtually dissect the anterior compartment of these muscles here the muscles of the forearm and I should also explain the important nerves and the arteries as well. Then we can proceed to virtually dissect the hand and then in the end we will be left with the bones. This muscle that is blinking right now is the flexor carpi radialis longus. The flexor carpi radialis muscle has its origin on the medial epicondyle of the humerus. The common flexor tendon. Remember previously we had the extensor tendon, well now we have the flexor tendon. The insertion is the base of the second and the third metacarpal bones. Here we see the muscle and you can see the way it here it inserts on the basis of the second and the third metacarpal bones. The actions of this muscle are the flexion and the abduction at the wrist. Now there. The muscle that antagonizes this muscle was the muscle that I have explained previously and that was the extensor carpi ulnaris muscle. Remember, extensor carpi ulnaris. The muscle gets its innervation from the median nerve here and the blood supply. We have to look here a little bit deeper and that was the radio artery. Now I shall remove this muscle. And we have reached one bigger muscle down there, but let's explain the muscles coming from here. The one that I have already explained was the pronator teres. The pronator teres has its origin on the humeral head, the medial supracondylar ridge of the humerus, and that is as well the common extensor tendon. The common extensor tendon was also an origin for our previous muscle. The insertion of this muscle is the middle of the lateral surface of the body of the radius. Remember, this is the radius bone here. You have the middle third of the lateral side of the radius. The function of this muscle was the pronation of the forearm and also to flex the elbow. You can see it from this perspective. We have explained the muscle here. Remember, the supinator muscle and the supinator muscle is the antagonist of our pronator teres. The pronator teres gets its innervation from the median nerve right here and the blood supply is supplied by the ulnar artery right here. The ulnar artery comes from the brachial artery up there. Now I shall remove this muscle and you can see the ulnar artery right underneath it. The other two muscles that I wanted to explain here and this muscle was the palmaris longus and the flexor carpi ulnaris. Let's start with the palmaris longus muscle. The palmaris longus muscle has its origin on the medial epicondyle of the humerus, the common flexor tendon, and it has its insertion on the palmar aponeurosis down there. The palmar aponeurosis is something similar to the extensor hood that we had on the back or the dorsal aponeurosis. Now let's get back to our muscle. The blood supply comes from the ulnar artery and the innervation comes again from the median nerve. The action of this muscle is to flex the wrist down there. The antagonists of this muscle can be seen here. Here was our muscle here, this one, the palmaris longus. While the antagonists are the muscles that I have explained in our virtual dissection of the posterior compartment of the forearm muscles, and that is the extensor carpi radialis longus, 
the extensor carpi radialis brevis, and the extensor carpi ulnaris. Now let's remove this muscle and explain the flexor carpi ulnaris. The flexor carpi ulnaris gets its innervation not from the median nerve but from the ulnar nerve. So now you can see the muscle from the frontal point of view and you can not see one particular detail about this muscle is that if you look at it from the medial point of view it has its origin on the medial epicondyle the, the common flexor tendon here just like our previous muscles but it has one particular detail that makes the, it different from our previous muscles and that is this detail here it has its origin also on the medial margin of the olecranon of the ulna the insertion of this muscle is the piriformis bone hook of the hamate bone, and the base of the fifth metacarpal bone. Now I'm not sure how clearly this can be seen here. Here is the piriformis bone. Here is the hamate bone, and that is not clearly illustrated. And here is the metacarpal bone, the, it, the supposed attach on the fifth metacarpal bone, the base of the fifth metacarpal bone. So we had the hamate bone, the metacarpal bone and the piriformis bone. And here is our muscle. You can see how it's illustrated. Well, not so clearly, but yeah, you can see the way it is, the way it inserts. Here was the ulnar nerve that supplies with innervation, and the remember the muscular branches of this nerve, and those are the C7, C8, and D1 branches. Now I shall remove this muscle as well, and let's proceed with this big muscle we had here. I have already selected this muscle when I was explaining the antagonists of the extensors. Now here is the flexor digitorum superficialis. Remember, it is called the superficialis because there is also a profundus, flexor digitorum profundus, right beneath that, this muscle. The origin of this muscle is again the common flexor tendon up there and that is at the medial epicondyle of the humerus. It also has its origin on parts of the radius and ulna as well. The insertion is the anterior margins on the basis of the middle phalanges of the four fingers down there. You can see it. Remember it's supposed to be on the basis not, not illustrated here but here on, on the little finger, it's illustrated more accurately rather than on the other fingers. Now, the action of this muscle is to flex the fingers primarily at the proximal interphalangeal joints. Proximal interphalangeal joints right here, that's its primary function. The antagonist of this muscle was the extensor digitorum muscle, which you can look back in the beginning of our virtual dissection of the forearm. Blood supply comes from the ulnar artery here, and the innervation is from the nerve that I have selected so many times so far now, and that is the median nerve right here. Now I will remove this muscle, then we can proceed further. And wow, now we can see the profundus muscle. Here is the flexor digitorum profundus muscle. The profundus muscle has its origin on the upper uh, uh, part of the waller and medial surfaces of the body of ulna. Here is the ulna. It has its origin also on the interosseous membrane that was the membrane between the radius and the ulna. The insertion is base of the distal phalanges of the finger. Remember, our previous muscle was the base of the uh, middle phalanges of the finger. Because this one inserts more distally at the distal phalanges, the action also differs from the superficial one. And the action is to flex the hand at both interphalangeal joints, meaning the proximal and the distal interphalangeal joints. That was the profundus muscle. The blood supply comes from the artery that I have explained so many times now. If you watch the posterior compartment, we have this artery here. Coming from the ulnar artery, there was the common interosseous artery. And this got its name because of the interosseous membrane. The common interosseous artery gave away the anterior interosseous artery and the posterior interosseous artery. The posterior interosseous artery was important for our posterior compartment that I was explaining earlier. 
While now we are just interested for this muscle in this here artery, and that is the anterior interosseous artery, because that's exactly the artery where our muscle, the flexor digitorum profundus, gets its blood supply from. Flexor digitorum profundus is flexing the hand as well. Now I will remove this muscle to explain you another muscle here that's left, and that is the flexor pollicis longus. While the muscle does what its name says, it flexes the thumb. The origin of this muscle is the volar surface of the radius and the adjacent interosseous membrane. Here we have the radius and interosseous membrane between the ulna and the radius. That's where this muscle has its origin. The insertion of this muscle is actually the base of the distal phalanx of the thumb and not the tip here. The tip is illustrated. It should be the base right here. And the action is actually just a flexion of the thumb. The extensors on the other side that I've explained, the extensor pollicis longus and the brevis, were the ones that were that are antagonizing this muscle. I have explained this in my virtual dissection of the posterior compartment of the forearm. But now let's stick back to our anterior compartment. This muscle here, that's the flexor pollicis longus. The flexor pollicis longus gets its blood supply just as, as I have explained earlier from the anterior interosseous artery. The anterior interosseous nerve, it is the branch that comes from the median nerve. It innervates our pollicis longus muscle. Now let's remove the pollicis longus muscle and we have only one muscle down there left that I have explained as an antagonist of the supinator muscle that was right there. This is the pronator quadratus, the pronator because it's antagonizing the supinator in the posterior compartment of the hand. The pronator quadratus muscle gets its blood supply from the anterior interosseous artery and the art that's artery right here blinking right now. And it gets its innervation from the anterior interosseous nerve that comes from the median nerve. Remember, this is the median nerve. And we had a branch from the median nerve that was the anterior interosseous nerve. It innervates the pronator quadratus. The action of the pronator quadratus is, of course, the pronation. The origin of this muscle is the medial anterior surface of the ulna. The insertion of this muscle is the lateral anterior surface of the radius. Quite simple. So finally we are done with forearm anatomy. You understand the movements such as extension, deflection, you understand as well the pronation and the supination. You understand the muscles, the anterior, the posterior compartment. Well, the next thing that I will explain is actually the hand anatomy. You can watch that video here. You can also watch my previous video here. Now these lessons come as a part of my software called Animated Anatomy that you can purchase on animatedanatomy.com. If you don't have money to purchase my software, then you can at least subscribe for more free content in the future. Thank you.